Now, the first thing we need to do in answering this question is to make a sketch of the scenario. We would want to sketch the ellipse first. Now, we have this equation 4x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And one way to sketch the ellipse is to find the intercepts. So what we could do is let x equal 0. And if we did that, we would have y squared equals 4. And then if we solve that, we would get y is equal to plus or minus 2. So that means that our ellipse would contain two points, 0 comma negative 2, as well as 0 comma positive 2. So 0 comma negative 2 would be down there, and 0 comma positive 2 would be up there. And then similarly, we can let y equal 0 in the equation of the ellipse. Then the y squared term would cancel. This would give us 4x squared is equal to 4. Divide both sides by 4. And then we can see that x would equal plus or minus 1. So that would be two additional points, one whose coordinates is negative 1, 0, the other whose coordinates is positive 1, 0. And those points are represented here as well as here on the diagram. Now, the question implies that there are actually at least two points on the ellipse that are furthest away. We could perhaps envision that those points would be over here and over here. And it is our job to find the coordinates of those two points. And in order for us to do that, we got to think about distance because to be farthest away means to have a maximum distance. So we're going to need to recall the distance formula between a point and another point. And that distance formula you may have learned in a previous pre-calculus course looks like this. It's basically derived by using the Pythagorean theorem. And this is our distance formula right here. Now it's going to turn out to be a lot easier for our calculations to rather than maximize the distance, but to maximize distance squared. So what we're gonna do is square both sides of this equation. So if we square the left side and then also square the right side, we end up with a distance squared formula, which again is going to be a lot easier to work with rather than a pure distance formula. So this is our distance squared formula right here. And that basically eliminates the square root. Now we're going to begin to plug in some values, perhaps we can do that by letting this coordinate be our x1, y1, and then the other coordinate over here, we can label that our x2, y2. So now we're gonna to begin to plug that into our distance squared equation. So our x2 is going to be x, and then minus our x1, which is just one, and then don't forget to square it, and then we have y2, which is our y, minus y1, which fortunately is zero. So this can simplify just a little bit. We're gonna have d squared is equal to x minus one squared plus y squared. So this is what we like to call our objective function because our objective is to maximize this distance squared value. But we also need a constraint equation, and that is where the equation of the ellipse comes in. This is the constraint because the points that we're looking for are constrained to be located on this ellipse. And what we're going to do with our constraint equation is actually solve it for y squared. So what we'll do is subtract 4x squared from both sides, and then what we see is that y squared is equal to 4 minus 4x squared. The reason we do that is because if we look back at our objective, it contains a y squared right here. So what we're gonna do is make a substitution in which this term here gets plugged in for y squared. And what's nice about doing that is it makes our objective in terms of just a single variable. And that's really a good thing because it's going to allow us to proceed very nicely. So there is our objective equation in terms of one variable. The next thing we'd have to do is compute its derivative. And that's gonna help us find the points that maximize, or that have a maximum distance, excuse me, from one zero. So when we do the derivative, we could write the d squared as d squared prime. And then over here, we have to do a bit of a chain rule. So you pull the two down in front, you have two times x minus one raised to the power of one, and then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x minus one is just one, so you're really just multiplying that by one. We don't even need to write it. Over here, we have the derivative of a constant, which goes to zero, and then here's just another little power rule, so you have minus eight x. So in fact, we can change this to a minus eight x. Once we have the derivative, our next step is to set it equal to zero. So setting this equal to zero, we're gonna solve for x, which turns out to be a critical number for our distance squared equation. Let's distribute this two. We have two x minus two minus eight x equals zero. 
We can combine like terms. So 2x minus 8x, we've got a negative 6x minus 2 equals 0. The rest is pretty easy here. Negative 6x equals 2. We divide by negative 6. We get x is equal to negative 1 third. This is our critical number. But we have to make sure that that critical number indeed maximizes the distance. So what we do is a first derivative test. We plot our critical number on a number line. And then we plug in some sample values. And one of them will be less than negative one third. The other one will be greater than negative one third. We're going to plug them into the derivative. So we might need to go back and capture our derivative. This was the most simplified version of the derivative right here. So we're going to be using that. So for example, if we plug in, let's think of a number less than negative one third, maybe negative one. So if we did negative six times negative one minus two, we get uh, positive six minus two, which is four. That's obviously greater than zero. This just means that the distance squared function would be increasing. It would look like that. And then if we pick a number on the right side of our critical number, maybe something like zero. So we'll have negative six times zero minus two. This equals negative two, which indeed is less than zero. So that means our distance squared function is decreasing. And this first derivative test therefore shows us that when x is negative one third, we achieve a maximum distance squared. So we know that d squared is maximized when x is equal to negative one third. But let's make sure we've answered the question. And the question is to find the points. Okay, so we know the x value, it's negative one third, but we need to find the y coordinate as well. So we have to go all the way back and look for an equation that will help us find the y coordinate. We have this equation over here. This is an equation giving us y squared. Could probably use that to find the y coordinate. And so what we'll do is plug in negative one third for x. So we would have y squared equals four minus four times the negative one third, and then don't forget to square that x. We'll skip the arithmetic here, maybe use a calculator. And when you do that, you're gonna get a y squared equal to 32 ninths. And then to find y, we take the square root. This gives us a y. Now remember when you square root, you're gonna get both a positive and a negative answer. And then you could square root the 32 and separately square root the nine. Of course, the square root of nine is just three. So we could simplify that just a little bit. In fact, we could simplify it a little further because the square root of 32 is the square root of 16 times the square root of two. And the square root of 16 is four. So you get plus or minus four radical two over three. Those are the two y coordinates. So putting this all together, the points would have x coordinates of negative one third. And then one y coordinate would be negative four radical two over three. So that's one point. And then the other point, again, negative one third for the x, and the y would be positive for radical two over three. So these would be the two points that have a maximum distance on the ellipse from the point one comma zero. And they are the correct answers to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But if not, no problem. I always appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.